Well, I wanted to cover the student handbook with you. It's in your course. Um, if you go to the main page and go to handouts, it is the MBA student handbook right here. And of course, I already have it open. And so it's right here. Um, I do cover this um, with students, so I just want to make sure you've got some basic understandings of a few things. And it's kind of one of those things that you really don't feel like reading it, so I just go over the highlights with you. And so just bear with me as I go through some of this information with you. Uh, the table of contents is here, just kind of describing the uh, our program, some of the little things that you need to be aware of with our program, uh, who people are, who, who can help you, and things like that. And so um, I did cover the mission of the university with you previously, but it's right here. Um, culture for service is something that we really do take into heart. And uh, you'll get to know a little bit about servant leadership in future classes and uh, kind of just what we believe um, a good uh, leadership model is to value our Christian uh, beliefs and uh, our Christian heritage as a university. So you can just kind of read through some of the mission there. And uh, you know, those are some of the guiding principles um, that faculty take to heart as they deliver a class. And then the mission of the School of Business, you can see right here, uh, develop Christian leaders who advance ethical business practices and foster a spirit of innovation in a global society. So you will have some global perspectives um, in a few of your classes also as they fit that particular class. And of course, with our MBA program, um, we want to make sure that um, you have a mastery and competency of knowledge um, in the core classes or the eight core classes that everybody takes. And then, of course, to build on with some strategic critical thinking skills and uh, to facilitate understanding um, between you know, ethics, leadership, and personal faith. And, of course, whatever your um, concentration is, you'll dive a little bit deeper into um, that con those concentration classes, which would be management for most of you. Um, the outcomes, you know, as you go through the program, um, you know, recognize a problem, try to figure out how to solve it. Those are some things that you'll definitely... Um, see that you'll want to that you'll work on um, identify alternatives and you can see the case that we've given you for the week um, you know definitely does that you have to figure out what's the problem what are some of the alternatives make a recommendation um, use some data to support that think strategically about the company the division um, uh, of the water filtration division that we're looking at and that's kind of the purpose of that case when we found that case we're like this really kind of hits on a lot of good topics and um, so that's you know obviously part of it too. So collaboration, it's a little bit harder to collaborate online, but it can be done, and um, through forums and a few other group projects that we'll bring into the uh, classes in the future. We are accredited with the Higher Learning Commission, uh, which is a regional accreditation, which is a pretty high level of accreditation, and we also have a business school accreditation through the IACPE. Okay. And so just a few more things about the classes. You know, you, you all know what the uh, prerequisite classes are. That's a part of the um, admission standards. So I'm not going to go through what those potentially are. If you need a prereq, you just let me know, and I'll help you find the class. Our core classes are right there. I think most of you probably know what those are. And then our elective classes based on uh, what concentration you're in for online. It's just the management concentration. You can see that we have quite a few potential classes to take with the management concentration. And, you know, I'm not, I probably won't have more than four available to online when those come up. Um, it'll be about a year, um, about the fall of 15 when those would be in the schedule. And um, basically, what I have to do is look at numbers. I have to look at the groups that I have going at any given time, how many are in a particular concentration. And what we usually end up doing is combining um, a couple of groups together when we get to concentrations. So there might be some people jumping into the online classes who need them um, at that given moment in time. So I'll probably just pick four um, that meet the needs of the majority of students. So you may not have a lot of choices with those, but if you look at that list and have a um, you know, a, a need. If you're thinking, man, a couple of those are, would really be interesting to me, let me know. We almost always run commercial law and negotiations because it's very popular, but we do have interest in project management and HR and work development and change also. The last two, really just we use as needed. Um, the colloquium is set up to be more student-led, 
and we only use it if we kind of have just a few students who um, just didn't get their concentrations in and they need to get together and finish up a class um, then we'll maybe run that and we'll, we'll run it based on what they want to study so we don't do that one very often but it's kind of on the books just to help us with students who have a special need to fit something in in the management internship and fellowship we don't use very often we primarily just use it for international students um, so it's basically um, when they come here um, they have the opportunity to go and work full time but it has to be tied into their curriculum and so um, we let them work and then um, do that for credit and I work with them to do that I work with their supervisor they have to do some journal reviews um, to keep a weekly log um, journal what they've been doing every week and do a paper about their experience so that really wouldn't apply to the vast majority of students with us but just FYI, FYI that's what that is so and you can just see what the uh, class schedule typically turns out to be which follows the schedule that's been provided to you and is on our MBA website and then this just describes all of our classes so as you get closer to a class, you might just want to look at this and say, well, what's that class going to be about? And you'll see that it's listed here. All of our classes have about a paragraph worth of description here that you can go look at. Okay, let me get past this. There's a few more key things I want to mention to you, so bear with me while I scroll down. I still want to miss the next session. Okay, um, You're admitted to the program, so you know what that process is, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, academic standing I do need to talk about um, you know normally every semester most students take six credits per semester you're taking two eight-week classes back to back 16 weeks you know with a break occasionally between the two and um, so that's your semester the first semester it's seven credits because of the BOS 501 class that we're doing here for one credit then most semesters after that it'll be six credits um, the summer term typically is just three credits um, you are required to maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.0. Um, if you do not, um, you would get a letter from our registrar. Um, she runs a report um, twice a year in the fall and then sometime in late spring. And then anybody who, whose GPA is below 3 and has been below 3 for a little while, um, she will send you a letter and uh, she'll let me know before you get the letter. And her and I will talk about the student and then there's a process to we have to go through you know typically what happens is you got a bad grade you got a F or a D which brings your GPA way down and so it's usually a matter of um, retaking a class that you can have a bad grade and to bring your GPA back up so it doesn't happen very often this is my third year here it's happened twice so it doesn't happen often um, most students um, are able to keep their GPA above three and so it doesn't happen very often so but I do want to bring it up if it does happen um, you know talk to me I would just say um, let me know what's going on and we'll talk about it um, attendance and assignments you know with online it's a little bit different you, we're not requiring you to be in a physical spot uh, once a week so as long as you're keeping your work up to date you're getting your assignments done on a weekly basis you're logging in regularly participating in the class the system will count you as present so it's usually not a big issue with online students um, incomplete grades you know if for, if for some reason some life event happened where you were not able to finish your coursework for a particular class I would say first of all work with your faculty and just say you know this happened in my life and you know the, the sad part is with working adults with families family emergencies do come up and we've had some really bad things happen to some really good students and um, you know we want to work with you I just want to say you know by all means we want to extend grace if there's a situation that you can't control that's affecting your ability to finish a class we want to we want you to talk to us about it number one go to your faculty member and just say you know this happened could I have an extra week or two weeks and just see what they say work with them directly if you feel like you're not getting the answer you want that's when you would come to me um, but I'm always going to say did you ask your faculty member first I'm always going to that's will always be my answer if you come to me for help with um, a faculty member or class did you talk to that person first because that's what you need to do if the answer is no I'm gonna send you back to that person If the answer is yes but you're not sure what to do about it or you don't feel like you're getting a a fair shake then yes by all means bring me in the vast majority of our faculty will work with you and extend you grace 
the key is always to over communicate so I can't stress that enough um, it's okay to email call um, almost all faculty will give you a phone number and it's okay to call us email us and say you know here's what's going on in my life and so on okay so just don't be afraid to bring that up if something's going on that will keep you from finishing a class we will work with you it's pretty rare that we actually f go through the, the full incomplete process because typically um, you know most students if something happens and need an extra week or two we kind of just handle that informally between this the faculty and the student and we can always go back and do a grade change once you submit the final assignments not a big deal but if something really big happens and you need an extended amount of time basically six weeks um, we can give you a six-week extension I have never done one of those um, just because um, our faculty have been very gracious in working with students one-on-one -on -one if something happens I can just, I, it's happened once um, that I've, um, um, we didn't give do an incomplete but we had um, a student who was two weeks away from finishing um, two classes he was taking two classes at the same time got his dream job in Texas okay and he was single and young and they won them right away so you know he didn't have to worry about selling a house or moving a family and they basically said we want you here now <laughs> they basically said um, the quicker you're here the better and the quicker you're here the more likely that we are to give you the job and so he had to make that choice you know what do I do and uh, one of the classes was online and the other one was on ground and I just said go to each faculty member explain what's going on and work with them and because he said I'm gonna need more time I, I'm not, I can't get the coursework done in two weeks um, I'll probably need a week or two after the course gets done to finish everything up with this move and everything he had to do. And I said, they'll work with you. And they did. And um, he's he's down there. Everything's fine. And uh, he's finishing up his coursework. So I just want to say that we will work with you. Okay. Transfer credits. Um, you know, we automatically will can bring in six credits. If you do ever have more, we'll definitely um, consider that and bring in additional credits. Academic honesty, um, unless an assignment is a group project, and if it's a group project, that'll be very clearly made to you um, in the instructions to the assignment and uh, by your faculty member. Um, but if that's the case, you know, a group project, it's the, it's the, the work of the group together. But otherwise, assume that um, an assignment is your work, okay? The, the implication without any clarification is the work you turn in is your original work. Okay, and so um, if we discover plagiarism, you know, typically what happens is we work directly with the student and say, you know, here's what I see. And I, the first time it happens, I try to give grace. I try to say maybe it was unintentional, um, whatever it was. I go to that student and say, here's what I'm seeing. I'm going to give you a chance to redo it. Okay. Typically, that's what will happen the first time, especially if there's no background or any evidence that this has happened before. Um, but if it becomes a pattern, then we'll have a talk. And um, it doesn't happen often in the MBA program. I, it, there was one instance when I first started here that was a pretty big deal, unfortunately, um, where uh, one class students were completing assignments in Excel. And they kind of had a template to follow, um, but when they turned it in, um, you know, about four or five students, I forget how many it was now, it's been a couple of years, turned in pretty much the exact same thing um, in terms of cells that were highlighted and there was no highlighting on the template and things like that. There was stuff added to the file that was unique done by somebody, but four or five people had the exact same thing. And that's not random. Okay, that was not random. It was basically one person did the work and everybody else just copied their file. You know, so that was kind of a problem. <laughs> and so you're turning in your work. It's okay to go to a classmate and say, here's what I have, what'd you get? You know, or work together to try to solve a problem, run something by somebody. That's okay. That's collaboration. That's working together to try to solve something. But if you just go to somebody and say, you know, I didn't have time to do the assignment, can I just use yours? You know, obviously that's wrong. But if you've got if you've done the work and you're going to somebody else who's done the work or you're, you're studying it, you're trying to figure it out, it's okay to collaborate, you know, talk to somebody, exchange emails, get a hold of each other. We, we want you to do that. That's part of learning. You do that at your, at your jobs. You work together to solve a problem or get a report done. And it's no different in the academic world. It's just that the work you turn in 
it's your work not somebody else's okay and so with plagiarism you know the assumption with with any work you do it's yours and it, when you're writing a report um, you know if you're doing research when in doubt cite a source okay it's always okay to oversight your work okay that's never a concern oversight your work okay and so here's examples of re, um, improper assistance you know turning in something that was written by somebody else wholly or partially um, um, basically not citing an original source um, it, those are basically it. you know using somebody else's work or not citing sources okay so just FYI with that um, we have a library they're great um, you can get to um, the library right here okay and you can access a database of material through the library right here and I'll have some more library materials to share with you next week um, I will email everybody individually about getting an ID card so that will happen for me yet okay so just uh, know that and also know that um, your time limit you have a seven year time limit to finish the program and the clock started on basically September 10th okay um, that's rarely an issue um, it has been an issue I can think of um, in the th my third year here we had somebody leave our program um, way before I got here and just had some very like, like I said you know sometimes some you know really bad things happen to good people and uh, a couple of deaths in the family where he just had to drop out of the program his family just was devastated by some losses and he had to drop out I mean it was just you know and you, you knew it I mean he he should not should, he should not have been in school and so we had a student do that um, you know after a few years you know he was finally ready you know the family kind of recovered from what was going on and you know they'll never be the same but um, he was at the point where he's ready to move on to the next step in life and finish his program and so he was more than seven years out by the time he came back and uh, he wrote us a letter explained the situation and we have a committee that oversees all graduate programs at USF I'm a member of the committee and a few other people are and again, we try to extend grace. We try to look at the circumstance and make a decision. And we let him back in the program. He's a very successful um, businessman in town. And we knew he could do the work. And so we didn't have any concerns that he'd be able to do it. We knew that uh, his life circumstances were completely beyond his control. And we let him back in. So I just want to say if, if life gets in the way and it does take more than seven years and there's very legitimate reasons for that um, time frame, um, then we'll definitely work with you to get you back in the program. You know, if you just dropped out because you just didn't feel like doing it, you know, that's that's not the same, okay? Um, but it's pretty rare that people don't finish within seven years without some life event getting in the way. That's pretty rare. And and um, that's the only one I've done in the, my two and a half-ish years here. That's the only one that I've done so far. So it doesn't happen very often. Um, at some point in time, you will have to apply to graduate when that time comes closer, which you'll be very happy when it does. Um, I'll let you know what the details are. Then registering and dropping for cl um, classes, um, you'll register yourself. Um, and so what that means is in November, um, you'll get an email from me. It'll be right around Thanksgiving time. It'll probably be the, be the week after. What um, we do as a university is we register our um, traditional undergrad students first. Uh, the registrar um, gets that open first and gets that ready. Um, faculty advisors meet with the undergrad students throughout the month of October. Then once that's done, then the registrar turns their attention to graduate programs. And so we open up the, grad, the uh, graduate program registration uh, right after Thanksgiving, uh, right up to Christmas break is what we'll do. And you would self-register yourself in my.usf. So you can't register yourself now because it's not open. Um, and so you'll get an email from me. Um, I will post an announcement or send you an email or let you know in some method of that registration is open. And if you want to register for classes for spring, then you could do so. Okay, so what we do two registrations per year. Um, we'll just probably just do spring um, for this upcoming time. So that's basically our spring for MBA is typically January through May. And then sometime in April, I'll have you register for summer and fall. Okay, so we just do it twice per year. We have basically three terms a year, um, spring, summer, and fall. Okay, so you'll, you'll hear from me in the future regarding um, registration. 
And then that's when you would choose. If you want to come to a ground class and register for one of those, you certainly can. That's kind of where you'll decide what you want to do. And if you want to double up, and that would mean taking a ground class and an online class, you certainly can do that. Um, there are six groups of classes going on right now. And so um, there are several groups work that you know their schedule is ahead of yours, and those ground classes are out there. So uh, in the fall, I don't let students double up when they first start with us, but in the spring you certainly can. So just keep that in mind. Next spring, if you wanted to take a ground class, which isn't possible for everybody I know, but if you wanted to, um, I'll just tell you that you could do that. The online classes because this is the first time we're doing the online program. Um, we don't have any extra ones in advance, so you, you're kind of stuck with the schedule for online. Um, but if you want to take a ground class, you can. And so basically every time you go to register, that's when you kind of decide, am I going to do a ground class versus online um, and, and vice versa. And we'll let you change your mind right up until the class starts. But once the class starts, we're going to say you've committed to one or the other. But uh, we do want to let you um, switch between ground and online to fit your schedule at any given moment in time. It's really up to you. And I, I know some of are out of town, so you're going to be online. But for those of you um, here, you definitely um, can switch between the two if that works. You know, it's, just, it's really just up to you. We want to give you um, all opportunities to do whatever works for you in terms of delivering the course material to you. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you had to drop out of the program temporarily, um, that actually happens, you know, where a student says, you know, I have a really busy time of year. I've got this really big group, this project to work on at work. I had a student who um, didn't take a summer class because he said, we're doing a system conversion at work. I'm going to be swamped. I'm not, I can't even take vacation this summer. And so I don't think I dare take a class. And so he just did a temporary stop. Um, and then he came right back once that was done. So he would, you know, miss two months of classes, which is fine. He'll, and he'll make up that class with another group in the future. So not a big deal. So that does happen. Um, people get to a busy time of the year. They're just like, you know what, I don't think I've got time to study. Um, I don't want to stretch myself and uh, have my studies fall. And so that, that's okay. You can do that. And if you need to do that, just let me know, and I'll walk you through the process. It's very simple, very easy. It's not a big deal. And we'll um, you know, kind of just put your account on hold with us and then we'll bring it back in when you tell us you want to come back so you just let me know now if you have started a class and whatever happens just know that at some point in time it says if a student withdraws before the fourth class you'll have a W um, on your record which is not a big deal once you actually finish the class um, then a grade will, will show up there it's not a big deal to have a W now if you do um, drop a class after the fourth class meeting you'll receive an F and again, that would, you know, kind of, it becomes a GPA killer, but um, you can come back and retake the class in the future. Okay, so just FYI. And the refund policy is kind of a big deal. We basically give you two weeks to drop a class. So, you know, that first day of class, you have up to eight days to drop. You know, for, so for a ground student, they could actually attend class twice and then drop and get a full refund. So it's kind of all or nothing with our, with our refund policy um, for eight days which would mean meeting twice um, day one and day eight um, or day seven but after that if you want to drop we gotta know right away an email to me is okay I mean that's that's all I need to show a drop to me or Wendy an email because obviously we got a date and time on that and then that's all that we need to drop you so you just shoot me an email um, and I'll take care of it and then the business office processes the refunds and things like that but I let when I get a, um, a drop from a student I contact financial aid the registrar and the business office and I let them all know at the same time that so-and-so has just dropped his class I let them know if you should receive a refund or not and I just you know look at the date and time of the email versus when the class is met and that's pretty easy to, you know pretty easy to figure out and they let them all know what's going on. You're dropping the class and whatever. So, you know, I don't understand all the financial aid rules. <laughs> they're, they're really, really complicated. And thankfully, we've got some very talented people in our financial aid office who figure that stuff out. So that's just, you know, they got, I have to let them know. And here's the withdrawal information. I got just a little bit ahead of myself. So if you, if you do need to withdraw, we do need uh, a document that you fill out. And I would just say, if you feel the need to withdraw, let me know, and I'll walk you through the process individually. It doesn't happen very often, but usually it's just because 
um, a life event has happened, I got busy at work, um, we've had students whose spouses moved, you know, got a, their, a job they wanted out of town, so they obviously they had to move, right? They had to leave the program. And uh, we've never had a fully online program before, so they were stuck. They had to leave us. So hopefully, um, in the future, we can just say, hey, go online. Okay, and the reactivation, it's just as simple too. You just email me or Wendy, either one of us, and let us know. There's a form on, the, on our website. And you just do it. Go ahead and fill out that form. Um, APA is the uh, method that we'll use for um, when you write a paper. Um, APAstyle.org is a website that you'll definitely want to look at. And then here's um, kind of all the people who make up um, some key administration and the school of business. And so um, Dr. Brett Bradfield is our vice provost. Um, Brad Van Kelsbeek is the chair of the school of business. You can see my name here is MBA director. Uh, Wendy's name is a program director, a registrar uh, who's in charge of VA certification, our financial aid person, student accounts, um, our library, career services, and um, some of our IT folks. So, um, you know, if you need something from somebody, their phone numbers are right there. Okay. So, and you can always go to me first and I'll set you up with the right person. And I'm going to show you, in addition to that, let's just go to our website right here. This will show you a few things. So if you go to, um, and I use this all the time when I'm calling people at a, in the office, I just go down to directory. And once you click on directory, um, it's pretty cool because you can just click a department. And the, the academic departments are first, but if you scroll down just a little bit, um, let's say I need to call the registrar and I don't remember their phone number, I can just go ahead and find the registrar right there. And now I got it. Student accounts, the business office, same thing. Student accounts is one that people need to talk to Tiffany every now and then. So if I just hit student accounts, and there's Tiffany's email and phone number. So if you just prefer to just shoot her an email, her email address is right there. So any department I choose, um, that will be there. So if I go back to the registrar, you know, there's three ladies over there. They work hard. They're awesome. Um, I treat them well <laughs> and uh, just call or email any of them and they'll be more than happy to help you out. They've got a general phone number. If you're not her sure who you need to talk to, just call the general number. Um, they're used to dealing with student questions. They do it all the time, every day. So they're there to help you out. So anybody that you need to get a hold of, there's a good way to do that. And one more thing, I'm going to go back to the home page just to show you. And I'm guessing most of you know the NBA website because you are a student, which means you had you probably looked at it. But if you just go usufalls.edu slash MBA, it takes it right to our homepage. And the the it will change eventually. I've been working with marketing to kind of update the look and feel of the website. So someday when you log in and look at this, it's gonna be different. Don't get too shocked by that. That's gonna happen soon, I hope. And on the left hand side, there's all kinds of info about our program which I'm guessing a lot of you have looked at, but the one I want to show you for sure is the forms. Okay, And it says application for admission, which is not a big deal because you've done that. But the one I want to show you that you know most current students will use is if you need to file an employer paid tuition reimbursement de deferment form with our business office. You can fill out this form. You can email it to Tiffany. You can mail it to her. Either way, it will work. If you drop out of the program and you want to come back, this is the form to do it. But email me first, get a hold of me, call me or email me first before you come back so we can talk about it and I can we can talk about what classes you want to get into and stuff like that. And the withdrawal form. So if, again, if you need to drop the program, uh, hopefully not permanently, um, but at least temporarily, you would just fill out that withdrawal form. And again, please email me or call me. Let me know what you're thinking and why so we can talk about it first. Don't just do that and surprise me, please. Okay, Just call or email me. Um, my, um, my information's on the syllabus, but I'll just tell you what it is. My office number is 331-6708. Okay? So it's always okay to call me or email me. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out, just kind of get you a feel for the student handbook and some of the things that um, we want students to be aware of. So if you have a question about something, quite often you will find the answer in the handbook. doesn't mean you can't call or email me. I'm more than happy to um, have you call me. Okay, so there's my phone number right there. Okay, thank you.